So, I discovered the Nexeth about a year ago and thought that it was an interesting machine. But as I was doing research for this video, sometimes I just couldn't stop laughing about some of the dumb stuff going on with it. So now, instead of a positive video praising this all-in-one tractor, I present you my honest opinion about this scrap machine. It's an electric drive with 1100 horsepower supplied by two diesel Lieber motors. The diesel motors are hooked up to generators which power four electric drives, one on each of the tracks, and they all have an output of 160 kilowatt hours. That's approximately 217.54 horsepowers. The balance of the output is conveyed to a power takeoff shaft and additional generators. I just love how they made it simple and efficient. Anyways, there are now six prototypes of this machine, some with wheels and some with tracks. But I don't think this matters much because if you'll drive with it on wet soil with a filled 24,000 liter spare tank, you'll get stuck either way. When you get stuck though, the logical thing to do would be to yank it out of the mud. At least that's what I would do. I mean, you can always buy a new one, but with this mindset you'll sooner or later have a field full of stuck neck sets. And I've heard about some studies that show a negative effect of stuck neck sets on yield. So anyway, you go get your second tractor. Wait, oh yeah. You don't have one, remember? You've sold it to afford this $2 million mechanical masterpiece. But since you really want to get this out of the mud, you call your neighbor. He has a tractor, so it should be fine, right? <laughs> it isn't. He comes and you just have to hook it somewhere to yank it out. Funny thing is, nobody knows how to do that. I've read some speculations in the comments under other videos. Somebody thought that hooking it up in the middle could bend the 15 meter long machine. Somebody else suggested pulling it with two tractors, one on each side so that it goes straight. But I think the main problem would be attaching the rope. Let's see what we are working with. The cabin or the interchangeable module don't seem like a good idea. I don't see much attaching space on the main frame. And to be honest, I think you could bend the wheel axis if you pulled it by that. So maybe you are just better off leaving it stuck in the field after all. Then we have one of the main selling points, controlled traffic farming. When you go to the Nexed website, you'll see this interesting paragraph about soil erosion. The main cause for this alarming development, soil erosion is permanent soil compaction as a result of the ever larger machines we use. I don't agree with this statement. And we also get this nice graph, which tells us that the next set will only ever drive over 5% of the field. They say this can increase your yield by 10 to 20 or 30% by not compacting your soil, which could translate to a 20 to 50% increase in profitability for the grower. Well, I don't know where they got these fairy tale stats from, but my take on it is that it gives you a guaranteed 5% percent immediate field loss because you can't plant in the tracks. And I think that if you get a big planter like the John Deere DB120, which is by the way 40 feet wider than the biggest next set, you'll have to do fewer passes through the field, which means even less soil compaction than the next set. But you'll still be able to plant over the whole area of your field, so in the end you'll get more produce with a normal tractor and a big planter than with a next set. To add to that, they say that the next set is meant, obviously, for or big farms, which are only in places like the US, Canada, Australia, Brazil, maybe Ukraine. But another of its main selling points is limiting soil erosion. The thing is, at least from my point of view, when you have big ass fields, they are usually on pretty flat land, and that means that there isn't as much soil erosion going on. And that's why I don't quite see how the next set's marketing strat makes any sense. Anyways, on to the next one. This vehicle has four interchangeable modules. Combine, sprayer, planter and cultivator. These modules can be changed by only one person in 10 minutes with plans to fully automate this process in the near future. And you know what's funny? 
They've been talking about these plans for the near future for almost a year now and the results are nowhere to be seen. The harvesting heads are made by Geringhoff and I've read that the grain hopper should hold up to 32,000 liters. That's roughly two times more than the Deer X9 1100. The planter and cultivator are made by Federstadt, but I don't have any details on them. And the sprayer is made by Daman either with 12,000 liter tank and 30 meter boom or 64 meter boom and 42,000 liter tank. And I love how easy it is to unload the grains. All you need is a grain cart and 5 people overwatching the situation. But since it's an all-in-one system, if it breaks down, you are fucked. And nobody has talked about spare parts or serviceability yet. Also, if there won't be any other companies manufacturing the modules, there is a high chance that Nexed will exploit its monopoly on the parts and charge a bit extra. So there should be at least one other company for healthy competition. And to close this up, Nexed apparently has some sort of AI image recognition and it skillfully recognized a few cars and a bicycle going around the shop. I personally think that the future of on-field agriculture is indoors, but I like this concept from John Deere, as the machines are light, automated, the swarm is scalable, and you aren't fucked if one of them breaks down. And what's your take on this? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. On the fuck! <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Chihuahua. Uh, 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 uh. Chihuahua. Mm, 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 mm. Chihuahua. Mm, 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 mm. Chihuahua. And uh, I've heard about some studies that show a negative effect of 